Hello. Today we're going to talk about QImage Ultimate and our tech support desk. Tech support receives emails with problems or questions or situations that might occur and we try to find the answers for the people that write in. Okay, let's take a very typical one. Uh, this gentleman wrote in saying that he's trying to make a 5x7 and no matter what he does, he doesn't get a 5x7. Well, let's see if we can simulate the condition. We'll hold down the right mouse button for a second, find out 5x7, close that up, put our image into the queue, click on the little plus sign, and there's our cat. We look down here where it says Job Properties Print Queue. We click on the Print Queue and check our size. He's right, 6.66 .66 by 5.0 no 5 by 7. Well, the answer is usually this. Uh, if you hold down the right mouse for a second, reopen the print properties box, you'll notice that you forgot to click the scissors. Well, first thing we do is click on the image to select it, click the scissors, pop! Up comes the right size, we double check it down here, 7 by 5, we're okay. Another thing you could have done is to, let me get rid of the cat, is to open your size box and click the scissors before you put the image in. In other words, I click my 5 by 7 I click my scissors, I close the box, I click the cat, and I've got my 5 by 7 on the first try. Well, look at this though, the edge of the ear is just about off the print. So let's see if we can fix that. We'll just take you into the edit page, the print edit page, and we'll give it a click. And lo and behold, over here we have two tabs, cropping and size location. We do want the cropping tab. Hold down the, the mouse button and just pull the cat down just a tad. And there he is, all fixed. Click done. And the ear is now within the picture and the problem is solved. You've got a perfectly good print. Okay, let's take another question from a tech support email. Uh, let's see, it says, I like to print three 4x6's on an 85 by 11 sheet of paper, but it doesn't look like I can do it with QImage. I see by arithmetic I should be able to fit it in, but QImage won't let me. It takes my third 4x6 and puts it on a separate page. Well, again, let's see if we can simulate the problem. Okay, we're going to hold down the right mouse for a second. Select our 4x6 size. Hmm, we're showing two on the page. I wonder why. All right, let's close this up. And we're going to put this flower in there. Click on the uh, plus sign. Click on the plus sign again. We've only got two. I know what it is. I think it's this box right here. How you want QImage to place the images on the paper. Right now I think it's on center but we're going to try optimal spaced. And now we'll put our third one in there. And there we are. We have three on a page. So the gentleman that wrote in can now get the most out of his sheet of paper, put three 4x6's on, simply by changing the placement mode from center, where he had it, and that would give him page two for the third flower, simply by changing it from center to optimal spaced. And there we are. That was pretty easy when you know. When you don't know, it looks very, very difficult. Okay, let's move on to another one, a little bit different this time. This is an email from a lady who is trying to reprint a picture that she printed a month or so ago and doesn't remember the file name, doesn't remember what folder she put it in, and I'm sure this happens to all of us. Can QImage help me? Okay, let's see what we can do. I would go up to File up here in the top left corner, give it a click, and come down here to where it says Open Automated Job Log. Most of you probably doesn't don't know it exists. Okay, I give that a click, and lo and behold, there's our job log of prints that we made. 
if I scroll down you'll see that there's quite a quite a number it goes all the way back to the beginning of, of uh, to the end of 2007 so you can see a lot of your pictures are stored here and now the trick is to find the one she wants well the only thing she told me in the email is that uh, it was a 5 by 7 she printed and that's all she can remember well let's see if we can help her we go up here to the binoculars that's the search give it a click and here comes the search box and what shall we type in well if the only thing we know is 5 by 7 let's type in 7.00 and click OK and see what happens. Hmm. There we go, green highlight bars. Let's see what this says. If I click that, sure enough, this was a 5x7. You can see the size down here at the bottom, Okay, where I'm squiggling with the mouse. And here's another green bar, again, 5x7. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see many, many more green bars, Okay, like that. They're all indicating that there's a 7 in there with a 0, 0 in that information box. Okay, well, that's the best we can do, but at least we narrowed it down to just a few of all the prints that we made in the past couple of years. So that isn't too bad. But what can we do now? Well, what we'll do is we'll say, we'll click on that, and we're going to say open. Now before I click on open, I want you to look on the left and see all the things that are going to come back into QImage. We've got the paper, the printer, the profile, uh, we've got the resolution, we've got print sharpening, we've got uh, uh, the name of the, the image, and we've got the size, we've got everything we need to reproduce that picture exactly the way we did it the first time. So let's click on open and see what happens. Okay and this one turns out to be templates okay let's see what we can do and the reason it's templates is because the pictures that belonged in them are no longer on the computer so we weren't able to bring that back up okay let's try another one let's go back in here to file and open automated job log and this time we'll be a little more discerning We'll click on the binoculars again, type in our 7.00, say OK, and again, there's our green bars, but this time we'll have a better look at what we're doing, and we'll come down here a little bit and see if we've got something else to choose. OK, let's try this one. I'm going to say Open. OK, and there's here's our picture that's the job that was printed at that time exactly and if that was the one the lady was looking for she's ready to go so you can see how that automated job log can help you in many ways to find something that you can't seem to locate right now okay let's try one more uh, we've got an email here from someone who says I'm trying to print 4 by 6 prints and make them look just like they come out of the store if I were to drop my digital card off and get them printed. But somehow or other I can't get a 4 by 6 print. Okay, let's have a look and see if we can simulate again. I go up here to my printer driver and I'm going to tell the printer that I'm using 4 by 6 paper, which is what our uh, tech support email said so I'm going to say 4 by 6 paper okay say okay okay and now I've got 4 by 6 paper if I put the flower in there okay it's saying to me 2x 2x what does that mean well what it means is that you're asking for a print which is larger than the printable area that your printer will allow on that piece of 4 by 6 paper. The printer is saying, uh oh, I'm only going to let you print on 5.76 of that paper and 3.76 going the other way. In other words, 5.76 left to right, 3.76 top to bottom, and you want a 4 by 6 print. You don't have enough room for it. If you want me to do it, I can do it, but I'm going to need 
two pieces of paper extra this way and two pieces of paper this way in order to make that print for you. Well, there's a couple of ways to get around this. I can hold down the right mouse for a second, get my size box back up, and click on Fit to Page. Okay, well I have to select my image always and click on Fit to Page. And there we are. And now I don't have that 2x, 2x thing up there anymore. And i am filled the page, but my print is 5.77 by 3.77. It isn't really the 4 by 6 that would match the ones you'd get coming out of the store. Well, what's our alternative? Okay, well our alternative is this. I'd have to go back into my print driver, say properties, and tell the print driver I want to print borderless. Okay, if I do that, it's warning me that the quality may decline on the edges, but we'll try it anyway. And we say OK, OK, and OK. And now we have a printable area of 6 by 4, what we wanted in the first place. But the print is still 5.77 by 3.77, so what do we have to do? Hold down the right mouse for a second, and this time click Fit the Page again, because we're refitting it. Okay, close that up, and now we have 4.6, uh, I'm sorry, 6x4 on a 6x4 paper, and that's going to be borderless, and that's going to look exactly the way it comes out of the store if you were to go in and have it printed commercially. Okay, I think we've touched on the most popular ones for the day. I thank you very much for listening. I hope I solved somebody's problem. And we'll see you next time. Bye.